Wednesday morning, everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Aces. And again, the book we're reading is Tarot of Ceremonial Magic. And it's published by Weiser. And it's available everywhere. Uh, this is an example from the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic of the Ace of Wands. And I just want you to I'm going to get a nice sort of close-up of that wand because it's the wand that's used in the artwork of all of the wands cards of, uh, of this deck. And it's just a plain almond wand with lots of little uh, nubs on it and everything else. This is actually my wand. And uh, it was patterned. Let's see if I can get it all in the thing there. And it's just a plain almond wand that I cut many, 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 many years ago. And each of those little nubs. There's the one end. And the other end is bifurcated. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So one it is singular and pointy and the other one is bifurcated. So there's a positive end and a negative end. But I digress. It's Saturday, and we're going to start talking about the aces of the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic, which has lots of goodies on it. First of all, it's Spirit of Fire. This would be the Ace of Wands. So wands are fire, and aces are spirit. So there's the Tatva symbol for Spirit of Fire. There's the Enochian sigil for fire. And there's this B here. And that B is, as we'll find out in just a minute, the B, that's a B, of Bitum on the Tablet of Union of the Enochian system, which was the last book we just talked about. And underneath that B, that B is a giant pyramid, and underneath that pyramid is the entire elemental tablet of fire. And so all the aces have elemental tablet of fire, Hindu tattva symbol, in case you want to astrally project into a symbol, uh, and actually find out what for yourself, what the Ace of Wands means to you in your own personal magical universe, along with everything else that an Ace of Wands means. After the trumps, the remaining 56 cards of the deck are divided into four suits, wands, cups, swords, and discs. As mentioned earlier, these suits represent four universal elements of fire, water, air, and earth, respectively. There's a fifth element, spirit, which serves two most important functions. Number one, spirit acts as a vibratory glue which bonds other elements together in infinite combinations and proportions to form the phenomenal universe. Two, spirit also serves as a vibratory barrier between the bonded elements, keeping them separated just enough to ensure their individual identity and purity. This active passive nature makes spirit the key element, for without spirit, 
all would be a chaotic soup. So pervasive is spirit's influence that it cannot be represented by a single tarot card or even a single suit. Instead, it reveals its presence and influence in the aces and court cards. This is exhibited perfectly in the Tablet of Union. The Spirit Tablet of the Enochian Magical System of Dr. John D. As the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic incorporates a great deal of Enochian information on the cards, I'll take a moment to review the basic principles of that system. Between 1582 and 1589, the Elizabethan Magus John D. and his clairvoyant colleague Edward Kelly embarked upon one of the most remarkable magical adventures ever recorded. It was Dee's consuming passion to speak directly with divine angelic beings in the same manner as the biblical patriarch Enoch, hence the term Enochian. His motives were as much scientific as spiritual. He was, by all accounts, perhaps the most intelligent and knowledgeable man of his day. The world would come to him for answers. When there was uh, then, excuse me, where then was he to turn for answers to the endless questions that haunted his insatiable curiosity? Questions concerning life, science, nature, and deity. To D, it was only logical to attempt to access the very mind of God and God's communicating angels for more information and wisdom. In the course of their invocations and ceremonially induced visions, D and Kelly contacted numerous spirits who gave remarkably detailed instructions concerning the construction of various magical implements and furniture. Most significantly, they were taught an angelic language by which the spirits could be more easily invoked. The details of how this language uh, were communi was communicated are most complex and have fascinated occult investigators for 400 years. And if you were following along in the previous book we read here on Facebook, uh, you know how complex that really was. Suffice to say in this place that it's a true language with grammar and syntax and the visionary experiences are the result of the proper intoning of these various angelic calls. And it continues to be a source of wonder and spiritual insight to modern magicians. D took copious notes. And the workings, uh, notes of the workings and much of the material has survived to this day. In the late 1800s, Enochian magic became a special interest to S.L. McGregor Mathers and the adepts of the Golden Dawn, who digested and synthesized much of the information and incorporated the element, elemental and etheric aspects of the system into their degree work of the order. In Enochian magic, the elemental universe is represented by four large elemental tablets. Each, and that was something like that. There's one for the Ace of Wands. That'd be the Ace of Discs. And that'd be the Ace of Swords and the elemental tablet of that. Okay, you, you get the drill. One each for fire, water, air, earth, air and earth. And a fifth tablet of union or spirit tablet. Which rules the other four in exactly the same way as spirit influences the four elements. These tablets are made up of squares upon which letters are inscribed. 
and the letters make up the names of numerous angelic beings who can be called up or visited by the magician. I'll discuss the details of the elemental tablets in the chapter on court cards. For the moment, let's just turn our attention to the spirit tablet. The spirit tablet is made up of 24 lettered squares, which reveal primary names of the four great spirits of the elements. X harp, that's the top line, okay? And it would spell out, if we would translate the angelic letters, it would spell out X harp, E-X-A-R-P, the spirit of air, who rules the entire elemental tablet of air. The next is Hakama, H-C-O-M-A, is the spirit of water, who rules the entire elemental tablet of water. Nanta, that's the green row, the third from the top. N-A-N-T-A, is the spirit of earth, who rules the entire elemental tablet of earth. And finally at the bottom is Bitong that rules the uh, spirit of fire, who rules the entire elemental tablet of fire. Keeping with the elemental formula, each square of the spirit tablet is divided into four sections. Makes it look like a truncated pyramid there, see? So if we look at that one, it'd be yellow of yellow, so that would be air of fire, excuse me, air of air. And the next one is blue and yellow, so that'd be water of air, earth of air, fire of air. The right section of each square, uh, excuse me, because this is the spirit tablet, the top and bottom section of each square is attributed to spirit and is painted white. The right section of each square is attributed to the element uh, represented by each of the four horizontal lines of the tablet. Air is found on the right section of each square of uh, X harp. Water is on the right section of each square of Hakama. Earth on the right section of each square of Nanta. And fire on the right section of each square of Batum. The left section of each square is attributed to the element represented by each of the five vertical columns of the tablet. As you can see, the E, H, and B, this column uh, of the spirit tablet, has the greatest ratio of spirit sections. See, it's got three white sections. Let's see. Uh, each square is three quarter spirit and one quarter the element of its row. Consequently, E is the master ruler of both Xarp and the elemental tablet of air. H is the master ruler of Hakama and the elemental tablet of water. N is the master ruler of both Nanta and the elemental tablet of earth. And B is the master ruler of both Bitom and the elemental tablet of fire. The four aces. The four aces of the tarot serve the same purpose as the spirit squares of E, H, and B. And you can see that for E for air, H for ace of cups, N for the ace of discs, and B for the Ace of Wands. 
The four aces of the tarot serve the same purpose as the squares EHNB of the spirit, Enochian spirit tablet. In the tarot of ceremonial magic, each of the four aces displays both the applicable Enochian square from the spirit tablet found in the lower in the lower left section and the lettered version of the entire elemental tablet it rules. Found in the upper left hand corner. Now do you see why the only thing I need to pack when I travel to bring my entire Enochian elemental furniture with me is my deck of tarot cards. And only my deck of tarot cards in so much as I've actually put it on the cards themselves. Any and every tarot deck implies this same magical dynamics. So I'm not saying you got to have tarot of ceremonial magic in order to have this stuff. If you have any deck of tarot cards, you have this stuff if you know what it is you're looking for. Enochian Temple Openings and Calls is the next section. To ceremonially access the various Enochian angelic beings represented by the aces, court cards, and small cards, the temple must be opened in the appropriate element and specific calls recited in the angelic language must be intoned. The text which accompanies the illustration of each card will indicate which openings and calls are appropriate, at least according to the Golden Dawn standard operating procedures. These temple openings and calls are found in Appendix 3 of this book, along with the other pertinent information. Now do you see why I call this my Desert Island book? The reader is advised to read all the material carefully and outline the sequence of actions before commencing operations. The next heading is Enochian Calls of the Thirty Aethers. There's a second great branch of Enochian magic that does not deal directly with elemental workings, but rather concerns itself with the Enochian view of the heavens. Surrounding the elemental universe, represented by the four elemental tablets in the Tablet of Union, are 30 aethers, or heavens. The lowest aether is Tex, and is closest to the elemental universe, and the highest is Lil, and represents the supreme attainment of the magician. The 30 aethers roughly correspond in threes, to the ten sephiroth of the tree of life and are usually illustrated as 30 concentric circles surrounding the five tablets. A more accurate image would be of 30 transparent spheres, one inside another, like a glass onion. These 30 aethers can theoretically be accessed simply by ceremonially intoning the 19th Enochian call. And we talked a lot about this in uh, just a couple of weeks ago. The magician, however, can fully access only as far as his or her illumination will permit. Starting with the 30th Aether and working up, almost everyone receives visions of the lowest Aethers. The magician will eventually come to a point where he or she is denied a vision of the next Aether, or at least a clear image. By studying the records of his or her visions in previous sessions, the magician can get a very good idea of what obstacles remain in the way of spiritual advancement and clues as how to overcome those obstacles. Details of etheric aspects of the Enochian magic can be found in Appendix 3 of this book. Finally, the tattva symbols. 
Now these are the Hindu meditative symbols for the elements. The, as we'll learn in a second, the black egg is spirit and the uh, uh, red triangle is fire. The yellow square is earth. The silver crescent is water. And the blue dot or the blue circle is air. And so, so this would be spirit of air, spirit of water, spirit of earth, spirit of fire. In addition to the elemental tablet of spirit, uh, the elemental tablet and spirit tablet uh, square, each ace of the tarot ceremonial magic displays the great Enochian sigil of the element. That's the sigil of the element right there. Fire. Earth. water, air. Let's see. And the appropriate Hindu tattva symbol found in the lower right. The tattva symbols have been used in the East for millennia as objects of concentration and meditation. Because of the purity of color and form of the tattvas, Adepts of the Golden Dawn use them to astrally project into various elements. The technique is very simple. The operator begins by gazing intently at the appropriate tattva symbol for several minutes. He or she then turns their gaze to a blank, neutral, colored black background. A polarized image of the symbol remains momentarily floating before the operator, who then imagines entering or projecting through the ghost image of the symbol. This is a disarmingly simple yet effective technique, which allows the diligent practitioners to tap directly into the source of occult knowledge. I can think of no better way to explore the true significance of the various cards. The symbols are as follows. Spirit or acacia is a black egg. Fire or tejas is a red triangle, point up. Water, apas, is a silver uh, crescent. Air, vayu, is a blue circle. And earth, prithvi, uh, uh, a yellow square. Aces are spirit representatives of their respective suits, so their tattva symbols are composite. Uh, are composite. Okay, a black egg within a silver uh, or a red triangle for the ace of wands, black egg within a silver crescent for the ace of cups, black egg within a blue circle for the ace of swords, and black egg with a uh, within a yellow square for the ace of discs. Composite tattva symbols are also displayed on each of the 16 court cards, which we will start talking about tomorrow. Astrological attributions. The aces are the primary representatives of their suits and elements, not the manifested elements themselves but spirit and seed of the elements. They are above and quite apart from the other small cards. They do not represent specific zodiac signs, uh, degrees, or days of the year. Together with the four princesses. Now we're going to talk about the princesses as being very, very special, unique, uh, of the court card family, and we'll get to that in a, 
in uh, just a few days. Together with the four princesses, the aces rule quadrants of the heavens around the north pole of the earth. The meridian line intersects Giza, and the elements rule in yod heh vav -Hey order going eastwards as follows. Wands, covering Asia, cups, the area of the Pacific, swords, the Americas, and discs, Europe and Africa. Okay, tomorrow we're, we're going to start looking at the details of each of the, the four aces, and we'll actually probably have time even to start our chapter four of the 16 court cards. Anyway, uh, if you're interested more in uh, astrally projecting into these tatva symbols, uh, in other words, gee, uh, I want to know what in my alchemical uh, private uh, universe the Ace of Wands really means to me. I wish I could just go into Ace of Wands land and look around and see what it means to me. Well, you would travel in the spirit vision or astrally project, if you will, into that, the ghost image of that Tatva symbol. And I'll be talking more about that in uh, Wednesday, uh, February 24th, where I do a live Zoom seminar uh, that you can register for right now. Registration is open uh, on astral projection. So if you're interested, uh, you can scroll down to where I've posted the link to that. And uh, I'll probably post a fresh link to that uh, uh, sometime after my talk today. So if you're interested in uh, the astral projection and traveling in the spirit vision, you might want to attend that uh, that workshop. Anyway, that's enough for it. Constance is is uh, on my case about taking too much time every morning. So she says, you, you said it's only going to be 15 minutes every day and it's always over a half hour. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to keep it keep it a little shorter each time. Just to make her happy. Have a great weekend, everybody. It's Saturday. Kick up your heels with your mask on. Be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. <laughs>